We on. My guy, what's going on, man? Oh, uh, good. Can't call it. How you doing? Oh, uh, doing good. We want to welcome everybody. It's Wednesday, 10 to 11. It's the Devo and Chris Joe show, man. We back at it. Um, we haven't had any games recently. Last week it was Duke, so uh, I guess we might recap Duke, but we'll probably just talk about the game today um, with Boston College. And speaking of Boston College, we have a former uh, All-American, All-ACC, bucket getter, you know what I mean, who, who played at Boston Thanks. College uh, back, in, back in my era, 2005 to 2009, I think. Um, and we'll ask him, we'll get him on the show. And also, he, he has... Um, he has some ties with Syracuse. You know, he was a, he was the MVP of the 2021, um, uh, excuse me, TBT, uh, which we uh, we held that down and we we took home that 80k each. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for, hey, for listen, coming I on. I needed a piece of that, man. Fuck, I'm still pissed about that. <laughs> hey, bro, you 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 was with you was you was with us in spirit, man. Yo. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but man, we 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 gonna get my man on here, uh, Tyrese Rice, former All American at Boston College. Like I said, yes, he, uh, it was the two thousand uh, or uh, two thousand and twenty one MVP of Bayheim's Army in the TBT Championship. And, and I, like I said before, you got on, Reese. <laughs> appreciate you <laughs> for coming on, man. Man, for coming on the team. And, I appreciate you. I needed that. I needed that eighty k. Shit. Real, I appreciate y'all. Hey, 80K, 80K is 80K. We all need it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That, that, that helps your boy out real quick. And let's, let's uh, you know, before we get going into your Boston College playing days um, and, and talking about that, let's kind of uh, reminisce a little bit. So we'll go back to that 2021 um, summer. We were probably together for about a month, month and a half. Uh, with the Bayheim's Army, so just kind of uh, you know run through that and what you remembered and, and how that experience was for you coming back up to the queues, coming to the queues, and uh, you know practicing in the mellow and, and kind of uh, you know mingling with all those guys. Just kind of share your experience and uh, you know what it was like from yeah. your perspective. Uh, yeah, first of all, what's up, Chris? Man, it's good to see you. What's going on, good bro? Good to see you, man. Yeah. Great career in college, man. Definitely remember you. That three two on definitely Appreciate know what that. time it was. <laughs> oh. Appreciate you, but yeah, you know that uh, that time was you know it was fun. For one, it was fun. It was it was crazy at times. You know it was emotional <laughs> at times. Like it felt like it felt like we were together for much longer than we were, and I appreciated that. Man, I really got to really spend time with guys that. You know, I knew, but didn't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, you know, we came yeah. all up in a hoop game. And, you, of course, you know of guys, but you don't really know guys' character and, you know, who they are and what they're about until you really spend that time and you get in that fire with them and you get to see, you know, what comes out. And, and man, spending that time was amazing, dog. Like, I, I tell people all the time that we could do a 30 for 30 on that six weeks that we had. <laughs> yeah, that's good, dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, you can't even imagine. Like, if we wasn't there, you wouldn't believe some of the things that <laughs> that were happening. You know, while we were, uh, you know, doing that six weeks. But man, for us to be able to come together um, as a unit in the moments, you know, for me, it's always it's always been about moments for me. Um, you know, it's easy to uh, be successful and be yourself when everything is good and everything is easy. But when those moments come. That's what's going to be telling, you know, to who you are. That's when your real uh, personality, your real emotion, your real feelings come out. And we had a lot of trying times, man, and, and guys stepped right up to the plate, you know, and, and, and held it together. And, you know, we was like this when we needed to be. And Thanks. that was the most important thing for me, man. And that was, you know, special time. Special time. Never forget it, for sure. That's what's up. What, what's one moment you think uh, for you that really, I, I guess, sticks out to you? Obviously, when we won it, but I, I guess a moment um, during that six weeks when it was really like, all right, I, I, regardless of what's going on and, and, and all the ups and downs, I know we're going to be all right because this happened. Oh, man. <laughs> if I got to pick one, you know, if I got to pick one moment, I'm going to say semifinal game. Halftime. I know you remember that semifinal game, halftime. 
like it could anything could have happened in the locker room at that, at that time. Uh, <laughs> no you doubt. know, guys got the. It was cra- I'm talking like. It, it got to a point where we didn't even talk about the game. Like, it wasn't even really about the game. Like, dudes were just back and forth with so much emotion. And when you in a room like that with guys who don't have the mentality to to use it, to use that in the correct manner and, and not just fall apart, like, because that's what could have happened. It could have fell apart right there. We could have just – and we could have blew it in that moment. But to, for us to come out – in the second half of that semifinal game, have our backs against the wall, and everybody just tap into, you know, a different mentality, a real team mentality, and to be able to build from there and get that win and go into the chip. I I knew I was like, if we get in any tough moment, we're gonna win the game. Like it didn't matter, you know, to me, and that showed. Actually, it showed in the first game as well. It showed in the very first game as well. Um, but just to be able to come together in that mo- in those moments, in those pivotal moments, after all of the emotions and all of the, you know, the back and forth, like I'm talking like arguing, fighting, like whatever you could think of, it was happening. <laughs> like mm-hmm. whatever you could think of, it was happening. But when it was time, it was time, and dudes was locked in. So to be able to hold people accountable that you don't spend. You know, when you spend seven, eight, nine months together, it's easy to hold people accountable because now you know them. You know, but when you spend six weeks, when it's only six weeks and you don't really know dudes, you just know of them. And for that to come together like that, I was like, yeah, it's going to be hard for teams to beat us because we can win any game. If it's ugly, we win it. I remember I was saying that the whole time. I was like, the whole time I was like, listen, if we play six ugly games, we're going to win all six of them because we got, we just got the guys that's just tough enough to, okay, we got to get a stop. We got to make a shot. You can't let them score. We got a screen. Like, you know, we had to do it and you could challenge it. You can be like, Hey, come on, Dev, man. What the fuck you doing? You Excuse me. Excuse my language. Like what you, like what you oh, doing? No, you, bro? Like, you can do it. Yeah, you good on this one. <laughs> <Yeah, like, laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, you can challenge, like you, when you can really challenge somebody that changes the whole dynamic because you know how they going to respond. They know where you coming from. You know where they coming from. And you know, those moments was there. So yeah, if I had to pick one, if I had to pick, well, I could probably can't pick one. I'll pick two. One is that first game. And then the second one, would be in the, the halftime of that semifinal game. Yeah, Joe, I was tell, I, I, you know, I told you, Joe, just about everything that was going on, but when, yeah, he, when he said, listen, <laughs> listen, when I tell you, dog, he ain't bullshitting when he said that. I remember that specifically in that semifinal game, you know, it, it was Kane and, and Kiefer going, going back and forth at it. Yeah. Because, bro, we, you got to think, like, how the guys that we had on the team, right, that just, like, alpha males, you know what I mean? Like, guys who are used to being in that in that star role and really, you know, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, scoring a majority of the points or, or being the leader on the team. So when you get all those guys together, mm-hmm. now now you got to, like, you really got to play a role and go into a role. Like, like you you were the guy who was, you was getting the buckets at, the, at during this time. You were you were scoring the majority of the points. You know, we had DeAndre, you know, defensive stopper. Uh, you know, Kiefer mm-hmm. coming in off the bench, being a guy to, to, to add a spark. You know, t and, and we can go down the line about it. But, man, I, I tell you, bro, just <laughs> – you know, I mean, in the hotel, you know, in the, in the locker room, it, 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 man, it was, six it, weeks, it, not a lot of time to get that done. That's why it's, it's a, it, the TV is mostly guys who know each other. You got West Virginia has a team. Mm-hmm. Marquette has a team. When you get individuals, like you said, that know of each other, but don't know nothing about each other for real. And mm-hmm. you come in, everybody's coming in with like it or not, coming in with an ego, coming in with a certain, you know, and not maliciously or nothing, but to be able to come in there six weeks and say, oh, fuck, we need this money. Like, let's just forget everything. Let's make sure whatever it is to win, we're going to make sure we win. You know what I'm saying? That's what a team mm-hmm. special. And even that team, I think that was the first first year where the, where the Bayhams Army was constructed. And looking at the team, what the fuck? And it's about three cute <laughs> dudes on that team. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So that was a, it was dope. You know what I mean? I was, I figured, I was wondering, like, how is this shit going to work out? You know what I mean? But shout out to the staff, the players, everybody involved, man. She got that shit done. The guys had that mindset, yo, for real. Like, I'm telling you, a bunch of dogs. Like, like you got to have a team full of dogs in that tournament, especially, I mean, I, I think that year, 
I mean, it was so competitive, Excuse you me. know, just with, you know, the Marquette and even the last game with the, with the Florida team. Uh-huh. I mean, it was, it was a bunch of guys who have been known each other for a while. And like I said, we knew each other, but not, you know, we didn't really know each other. You know, we just come together uh-huh. for six weeks, but we had the guys to do it. Like you, you couldn't have done it with any other type of guys besides the ones that we had. It just, and it was meant to be like, it wasn't, like you said, it was, a lot of the games was ugly. We won every single rebounding battle, and then defensively we was locked in. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking mm-hmm. about locked in. So like we, you weren't gonna out tough us. That that was one thing. Like we 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 had the toughest to team yeah. in the tournament. You wasn't. I mean, you got a motherfucker dude like DeAndre Kane. I'm just gonna be real. This motherfucker is one of the the toughest dudes that you'll ever play uh, the game of basketball with. Just just how he his effort and energy every. I mean, the dude is so selfless as, as far as like when it comes to things like that. He's he gonna do whatever it takes to win, man. And and you know mm-hmm. when you got those type of dudes, DJ Kennedy. I mean, he, he was an all-time leading scorer in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? I think he averaged like mm-hmm. six, seven points with us. But you know mm-hmm. when it when it was time to he had some big plays, him, man. He made some big plays. <laughs> Exactly, mm-hmm. dude. but but I mean, what I'm saying is this: just everybody had to really drop their ego for a second, myself included, bro. You, you know, mm-hmm. I got a I got an ego when it comes to the hoop game. You know, I'm coming off the bench. I'm not I'm not playing as as, as much as I probably would have liked to. But at the end of the day, I knew what it was for, and, and man, mm-hmm. look, it, it worked out. And besides that, it was some good memories, yo. It was it was some good mm-hmm. memories, and it was a hell of an experience to, to be able to go through with uh with those guys. Man, amazing! It was an amazing experience, and and both of you guys, both of you guys mentioned the ego, and the ego was a thing, but that ego was also what got us in the in the positions that we were in. You know that we that so there was there was some good. There's always some good in the ego, um, but and understanding when to set it back and when to use it was the most important thing. And we had guys that just under we understood that. You know, we, we might not have had to ever do that before. Some guys might not have ever had to do that. And so it's going to come out a certain way. You know, it might lash out a certain way. You know, sometimes you might see a guy get upset um, in a moment. Um, and that's cool. For me, all that stuff is cool. Like, I never cared about none of that. Like, I want you – I want to see what your emotions like. Like, I want you to wear your emotions on your sleeve because now I know who you are. But now, come on now, mm-hmm. let's figure it out. Let's figure it out how we're going to make this work because, okay, you want to play more minutes? That's cool. Every we all want to play more minutes. We all want to do more in this basketball court. But we got to understand again, going back to those moments, that everybody had a moment. Like literally, everybody had a big moment in that tournament. Andrew Drew comes in and hits two big shots in the championship yeah. game when we were struggling. We was down eight. It was looking ugly. He comes in, boom, hits a three, hits a pull up, and now we back in the game again. It's like ah, okay, here we go. Devo comes yeah. in. Lefty, lefty joint off the glass, <laughs> baseline, baseline pull up, dog. Like we needed that. Like you know, like it was in the times where we really needed it, though. Like you know, yeah. we we reeled it a little bit, and now you show your worth to the team in those moments. Tyler come in, Tyler, one of the most most talented bigs that I ever like that I've been on the court with. I can't believe he stopped playing basketball. <laughs> I can I tell him that all the time. <laughs> every time he posts a, every time he posts something. Playing ball, I'd be like, yo, don't make me mad, yo. You about to make me mad. <laughs> I love Tyler, dog. I, I love him, dog. Like, nah, no lie, I love him. I, he really got a special place with me, and I only spent six weeks with him, but I really, you know, I really res- respected him, you know, for, for what he did. And, and Brisk, you know, all, I could go down the line, man. Everybody had their moments. Everybody had their moments to come in and do what was needed for us to win games. And, you know, that shit is special, dog. Like, if we were to play a whole season together, I don't even know how it would go. I don't even know how it would go. I have no idea. We will win. I can tell you one thing for sure. We're going to win. Definitely need a camera crew. Need a camera crew oh, for that team, man. Oh, my God. Uh, man, that's a fact. I, I wish you did, could show though. it, though. I don't know if you can show it. I don't know if you can show it, though. Like, we don't have to wait like 20 years till everybody was done doing what they were doing and then show it. And then that's show a fact. That's a fact. We were doing it in the moment. They'd be like, oh, these dudes is crazy. Right. <laughs> these dudes is crazy, but it was all love, man. And, and, you know, like you said, an amazing experience. An experience that we'll, you know, I get an experience like that again. So, you know, it was, you know, just glad to be a part of it. Happy that that Q's right. family, you know, brought up the way that they did, man, really showed us a lot of respect, um, took care of us, 
most more than anything, took care of us, made sure we was good. Um, did it, didn't fall into the trap of, you know, of our egos, you know, they, they still mm-hmm. respected us for who we were throughout all the things that were going on. Um, we kept our minds focused on the goal, even when it was rough. Um, and for people to embrace that and be okay with that, that shows you who they are as well. Um, because not everybody is gonna, is not, not everybody's gonna embrace that or not everybody's gonna understand how to embrace that. Um, so, you know, that was, you know, that was major for me. That was big time for the Q's family. Hey, bro, I'm looking in the, I'm looking in the back. I see, I see you got the two books up there. Um, yeah, I know you've been, uh, you, you know, you're the author, author of a few books and, you know, you got your, your, your foundation going on. Uh, I mean, kind of just tell us, uh, you know, how that's been going. Uh, you got, you got any, um, plans to write some more books and, you know, what you've been doing with the foundation and how that's been working. Um, well, right now with the books, the third book is out, uh, train a German boy is just out. It's on Amazon. Um, it's available there. Um, or you can also go to my Shopify, which is trustedlegacyapparel.org. Um, and you can order it from there. And I'll sign it and send it out and, you know, do a, do a few other things. But that that series is going to be eight books. I've actually completed seven. And I just um, I just wrote the eighth one and finished that one probably about two weeks ago. Uh, so that's going to be getting illustrated here soon. And, you know, the, the series is complete as eight. The next thing that I will put out is like a little short chapter book that will include. It's almost like a mesh up of all eight books. And just keep on kind of building from there, man. Um, you know, I, I enjoy, you know, the, the education part of it. I enjoy the, the giving back to the kids. Um, I believe that reading is very, very fundamental for them. And it's something that's lacking right now and it's showing. Um, so it's important for us who do have that education and do have the uh, the ability to go out and, and help others, you know, especially the, especially the youth. You know, to me, it's, it's a lot about Trash. helping the youth, so. As long as we can go back and do that and we have the capacity to go back and do that, I believe it's important for us to do it. So, you know, I had a, I think I had a, a pretty good journey um, throughout my career. I was able to go to a lot of different places. So the book series, it, uh, it taps into each place that I went to. I played in eight different countries. That's why it's eight books. And all through those eight books, we'll talk about some of the things that, um, that I experienced in those, uh, in those countries, um, give you some, information, you know, on, you know, just things from there, you know, the foods that they eat, the tourist attractions, um, some highlights of things that you may not even really know about, um, in these countries and just kind of, and get an add a visual to it. Every, the illustrations are amazing. The illustrator that I had, like he's, I couldn't even, I couldn't ask for a better person, um, to do it. Um, so he really brought a lot of those things to life, man. And it's just, you know, it's just started with a dream of basketball. And that's what it's built from. All right. I want to ask you, just skip um, talking, just going back into hoops real quick. You know, I had a few questions for you because, like I said, you were one of them hitters that I always used to watch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, growing up and even, like, later on when, you know, you know, because the pr- perspective that guys have of overseas hoopers is never like, the, obviously, the NBA is up here. So guys back home, especially here in Montreal, Canada, they didn't know who's who. And you were always someone I'd be like, oh, yeah, watch this. This is overseas. These are the type players that's overseas, right? So what I want to ask you is, after four great years at BC, um, you go undrafted. How was that decision for you to, you know, a lot of guys might try to chase that real quick. Like, no, nah, I'm going to go do the D league mm-hmm. or I might go uh, do training camp for a little bit and see what happens. You went right overseas. What went into that decision? Um, if I'm being honest with you, dog, I never thought that I would go overseas. It never was a thought in my mind. Like I didn't think about it in college. Um, mm-hmm. My whole Honestly, I didn't know if I would ever be even be an NBA player going to college. I was just happy to go to college. Um, like right. I knew that I was a good basketball player. I knew that, you know, I had the IQ or, the, you know, the talent, the work ethic. I knew I had these things, but, you know, the, the NBA was such a, you know, it's, it's way up mm-hmm. here, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I, I never really knew if I would get to the NBA. Um, but then fast forward getting through college and, and playing – you know, having a good career, then that then that dream starts to become a little more true. It's like, okay, well, maybe or a little bit more of a reality start to believe. It's like, oh, okay, I actually, maybe I could go to the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And for that not to happen, quite honestly, man, that shit was a crush. You know, it, it was a crush because, you know, I saw so many guys that were going to the NBA and I'm like, dog, I've been killing this nigga since it. I was like 13. <laughs> I'm like, since I was like 13 years old. Like, you know, yeah. so like since I was a kid, yeah. you know, I, I didn't understand. And so then I had to shape my mentality and kind of change the way that I was, that I thought about the game. And the one thing that I, that I knew was I really, really loved ball. So it really didn't matter to me where I was playing. As long as I was doing what I love to do, I knew I would put effort in it. Um, and so, you know, going overseas, my mindset was actually, I'll give you my mindset as a rookie. The first thing yeah. I thought, and I never forget my uncle telling me this too, you know, it was all the time about going to NBA. My uncle was like, man, you just go overseas for a year, average 20, and then you go to the league. And I'm like, you come right back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can see it going like that because, mind you, I know nothing about Europe. Like, I don't know anything exactly. like, about 100%. Like, I know nothing. <laughs> you get over there and it's, you get over there and it's like, oh, oh, okay. This is not about to go like that. <laughs> this is not how it's going to go. You know, I played in Greece my first year. This was at the time when Greece had, I think, five Euro League teams, four Euro, four Euro League teams, three Euro Cup teams. And then Damn. two Euro Challenge teams. So mm. Scott was stacked. Yeah. Like Pat Bev, Ted Dosis, Lin- Linus Clazer, uh, Josh Childress. Oh, mm. man. Uh, what's the big fella that played for Minnesota? Pekovic. Uh, yeah. So wow. One of your accused guys, Drew Nicholas. Um, you got you got the Dematidis, then you get into the European guys as well, <laughs> man. It's just... It's guys over there. Like, it's it's guys there night in and night out. You compete. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, I grew to really love it. Like, I, I grew to really, really embrace that part of the game because it made me think it wasn't just about athleticism. It wasn't just about talent. Right. It wasn't just about skill. You had to really go out there and you needed those things, but you also needed to be able to think the game and be able mm-hmm. to figure things out, you know, on the fly. In a different country, different language barrier, they don't understand, you know, what kind of person you are because they don't know anybody from where you're from. Like, they don't exactly. know anybody that talk the way you talk or they don't know anybody that, you know, that intensity that you may come with in a moment or that pushback that you may give it, that ego. We talked about the ego, that pushback that you right. may give in that moment. They don't understand that. So yeah. if they don't know you, now you got to learn how to embrace other things and not just basketball. And I think that's where some guys, they kind of, um, they miss it. You know, they, they, they have that lapse because they don't embrace the things outside of ball. The things 100%. outside of ball is what's, gonna, is what's going to help you on the court, especially over there. You got to embrace the culture. You got to embrace where yeah. you are. You got you to go out there and put your feet on the ground. Yeah. You got to go put your feet on the ground. You got to put your feet on the ground. crib. If not, you're in the you're crib. Stuck. You're bored. You're complaining. Instead of going out there and submerging yourself in the culture and going to eat different things and just meet different people, you got to be a little bit, especially it's tough for a person who's an introvert, for instance, but if, if you got to yeah. put yourself out there a little bit to just try, you know what I'm saying, make that shit work yeah. for you. Yeah, and also what that does is that gives everybody else, the domestic players, the people that are from that country, that gives them an idea about who you are. And now they can communicate with a certain way. So now to you and flash out they're like uh you know he's okay he'll be okay mm-hmm. we we know we know what type of time he's on we know this was just a moment but then you also able to communicate that and build through it so you know it's, it's a lot that comes with you know being in europe and it's not just ball you know you can't go yeah. over there with a particular mentality <laughs> and think that it's just that you're just gonna walk through it it's not gonna happen um so right. you know being able to learn through that process is is big man very big yeah, I wanna I wanna hop in real quick to you, talking about. Um, we'll get back to you to overseas, but um, yeah, I wanna hop into your Boston College career a little bit. Um, you know, obviously we play Boston College tonight at the Dome, so I, I'm definitely you know okay. I'm cheering for Q. I'm cheering for Q. Small fuck, we already know what time it is. But uh, but kind of just 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 hop into that because uh, you know coming from you know Richmond, Virginia. Um, yeah, I, and, and I don't know if the, uh, the viewers know, but I played against, I played against Tyrese shit. Our first time was in high school back in, uh, when I played yeah. at Oak Hill, we played at, uh, VC, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. we played at BCU. <laughs> and um, mm-hmm. so, you know, they was, was, I think, I think it, man, <laughs> wow. it was packed. Because y'all, y'all, and I think y'all was, so Bird High School, right? Yeah, LC Bird High School, yeah. LC Bird. So, you, I mean, you guys were usually regularly, like, up there competing with the state championships year in and year yeah. out, for real. So, yeah. But, but so, but, you know, we, we have Joe, you know what I'm saying? Myself, KD, Ty Lawson, Jamont Gordon. Yeah, that's a hell of a hell I mean, team. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then you got like <laughs> KC Rivers. KC uh, Rivers, and, right. Uh, right. Bomba Falls, yeah. seven. Bomba Falls, seven, David Palmer. Man. Yeah, we, we had, we yeah, had a squad, so that was. But I mean, T- Ty- Tyrese. I mean, he had about thirty or something. He, he did his thing. It was just, but it was. Yeah, you know, we had too many motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? It was just that's that's just how it was. But uh, that's exactly it, what it was. <laughs> that's just what it was, yo. We, it, but that's that environment was dope, though. But but kind of talk about <laughs> um, you know you going into Boston College and, and how that transition was you from for you from high school to college, uh, and, and especially going into the ACC at that time when that was that that. It was one of the toughest conferences in, in the country. We're talking about Duke and Carolina, and and uh, you know, eventually you you know you became an All American there and in all, in all conference, you know, Player of the Year candidate. And so, kind of talk about your experience and in, in, uh, you know from day one getting up there. Yeah. Um, first, first off, two things. One, I think we're getting y'all tonight. Number one, <laughs> we're gonna get y'all tonight. Number one. <laughs> both ten and four. No, both ten and four. Boston yeah, good solid. Like, we playing some good ball. We playing some good ball. We should no lie. Yeah. They should be. They should be twelve and two. They they lost two games. Just ended the game. Anyway, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, yeah. And that Oak Hill team. <laughs> man, that's that Oak Hill team. People still to this day back home talk about that game. You know they talk about that game, man. It, you know, but um, going to BC. You know, I looked at it like a like an opportunity to be in the ACC. My dream was always to be in ACC. So initially, I always wanted to go to Carolina. I was a big Carolina fan um, growing up. You know, my whole family from North Carolina. Um, I grew up on ESC, on UNC. I grew up on Shamar Williams, you know, Ed Coda. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I grew up in that time. Julius Peppers, like I used to love them dudes. Eric Man, Marshall, tough, tough team. Eric Marshall. Man, you know, a bunch of guys like you. I mean, you name it, you know what it is at Carolina. You can go, you can run off 35, 40 people uh, that's probably at the Hall of Fame or something like that. Um, so my dream was always to be an ACC player. <laughs> and when I found out that BC was going into the ACC, that just sparked my interest even more. But more importantly, they were the one school that, you know, stayed around, um, that stayed around for me through my, uh, through my times of not being eligible. Like I wasn't eligible my senior year. I had to do like all types of extra stuff to become eligible. Like I had to take the SAT multiple times. I had to uh, like engage in like a bunch of different core classes just to get my GPA up and things like that. Right. And they stuck with me through that. Um, they stuck with me through that. Um, obviously some things had to happen on their end for me to get there. Um, but they did, and, you know, yeah, and that that really stuck with me. You know, I didn't know anything about Boston. I didn't even care to know anything about Boston. Like I said, I was just a like I told you before, I was just a hooper. Like I just cared about going to ball. And it didn't matter where it was at. It didn't matter what was going on. And you put the ball out there, you put some guys out there, and we're gonna go and figure this out. Like that's just you know, that was just my mentality. It didn't need to be set up for me and it wasn't. Um I didn't have any guarantees. It wasn't no you come in here and you're gonna play right away. Or it, it was none of that. Everything had to be earned, and I respect that because now that means to me that means you're giving me a chance. And if I got a chance, then I'm gonna figure it out. Um, mm-hmm. It might not be right away, but eventually, you know, I'm gonna figure it out. Luckily for me, I had a bunch of great guys around um, that really, really helped me throughout that process. Good coaching staff, um, you know, everything, and you know, that helped me out. Family support was amazing. Always been amazing. So. You know, it makes it a lot easier to, to go into these situations and do what you need. No doubt. Bro, I, I kind of want to uh, go back to um, go back to the game tonight and we'll talk about it a little bit because our viewers, I mean, obviously that's what they want to hear about a little bit more. 
Uh, so <laughs> tell, tell me what you know about this this Boston College team. Um, I mean, I don't know too much about them. I know, like you said, they mm-hmm. they coming in at, at ten and four, a solid team. And, and Boston College is is one of those teams who he, he, a lot of times their record doesn't really show or reflect how, how good oh, yeah. they really are because they, they, cause they always going to come and compete. I was, I was talking to a guy last night. They always going to come and compete. They always going to play hard. They always going to give themselves a chance. Sometimes they just might be missing that one piece or, you know, they, they, they mm-hmm. you know, have some turnovers at the end or what it may be, but you always going to get those guys coming in playing hard and they're going to give our, give themselves a chance. So I, I guess, what do you see from that team this year? That's the difference in, in, you know, where they can really, I guess, get over that hump and, and, and be more consistent with their play this season? Um, I think it started in the end of last season. At the end of the year, you know, new coaching staff, he's integrating, you know, his philosophies. You got some guys coming back, got some transfers that come in, got some guys who get a little older, have more experience. Um, I believe that it started at the end of last year. They had a few really good games. They beat Duke in the end. They won an ACC game, I believe. Like, you know, so they had some things happen on the back end of last year that kind of, that, you know, built through the summer, um, that built through, you know, their progression all the way up until now. And the one thing that stood out to me and the one thing that I talked to those guys about is competing. Like, it's you're not going to win every game. You're not going to win every game. It just kind of is what it is. You not you don't have a, a gang of all Americans out here. You don't have a you don't have no twenty five thirty point guy where it's just like oh you just give him the ball he can go win it for you. But if y'all go out there and y'all compete and y'all show who y'all are every single night and not worry about you know the outcome, you just worry about what's going on right in front of you, then you're gonna have some success. Um, and obviously, you need some things to go you know to go right in these moments, but you know, you're going to put yourself in the right positions. And this year, it's a lot of that. It's been a lot of that. They've won a lot of games with just pure toughness. I don't know if you saw the last game against Georgia Tech. They just won that game yep. on pure toughness. They just they just played harder. They didn't play that hard in the first half. They came out in the second half like somebody sparked it, sparked, it, uh, sparked that match behind them, and they were just running from it. And they just... And they went out there and they played much harder than Georgia Tech. And then things, you know, when you put that kind of energy out there, good things start happening. People start making shots, hustle plays, yeah. taking charges. Uh, like everything starts going right. And now you can feed mm-hmm. off of that um, in those moments. And and that was good for them because they needed that. Because like I said, like I was getting ready to say, they had a couple of games that they were right there, you know, one, two possession game when you need to make the right decision or you need to have a good shot and they do that. Um, and I think the more that you play in those type of games, the more activated you get to them um, and you're able to make better decisions at the end of the games. And that's the biggest thing for them right now. That's the only thing that I think they need to do better is I'm going to keep coming back to these moments is playing, doing the right thing in moments because, you know, in games, it could be two possessions that happen in the second half that lose a game for you. Like, it, it could, and, you and, and that don't necessarily mean that it's in the last three minutes of the game. It could be with eight minutes in the game, you know, like something like that. And it's like, oh, yeah. that's what broke them right there. And understanding those moments and being able to uh, overcome those small moments is the challenge for this BC team. And I believe that that's their that's their only challenge right now is to be able to overcome those moments. Because if they can overcome those moments, maybe instead of them being ten and four, they twelve and two. You know what I'm saying? Like that makes a difference. Instead of being, I think one and two in the conference, they two and one. You know, so it's that changes the that changes the. Uh, I mean, uh, not yeah, that changes the whole dynamic of how you approach games and, and how you play in them. So it's very, very important for them to, to be able to overcome those moments in games and be ready for um, – and be ready for when they come. Yeah, no it's doubt. It's tough to play in that dome, though. I'll tell you that much. That that dome, tough to play in. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you know, I, never had, you know I had never been to the dome until we until I came to that uh, – to the oh, – um, okay. Yeah, and when I went in there, when I stood in there, I was like, oh, yeah, it's got to be hard to play in here. I know. I, I understood yeah, everything <laughs> from that moment on. Yeah, I, I understood everything from that moment on. As soon as I walked yeah. in there and looked, I was like, "Oh, okay, I get it." Like, okay, like now I get it. You know, yeah. like now I get it. You know, some things you got to see. You don't really understand, you know, what it is until you actually mm-hmm. go in there and you see. 
But once I got in there, I was like, okay, I could, I understand everything now. Now it makes sense when people yeah. can't make shots. It makes sense. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it makes sense that you see them in everything because they're in here and they in here enough, you know. So you know, you yeah, see all the little, yeah, you know, you see the and that's that little that states. gives us. Yeah, that could definitely help, man. Um, Put in twenty five, thirty k in there too. Shit, uh, on top of yeah, that, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a big game. I mean, back, yeah. especially like yeah. when back when like me and I mean. Yeah, I mean, nowadays it's kind of like it's maybe a little bit less, but I mean, back when like me and Joe was playing, like yo, yo, it was a thirty thousand. You know, I was locked in. Yeah, I was rocking shows out there. Johnny yeah, Flynn, Big yeah. Dante. Hey, come on now, like yo, yeah, yeah, I was rocking yeah. shows in there. I, I was, that was <laughs> that shit was a rock concert. That shit was a rock yeah, concert. That was yo. CTV. I was my CTV, trust me. I was we was locked in. I was locked in. I was right down the street. That was one of the only that was only one of the only things that I wish I could have I wish could have been true. I wish I could have played one year in the Big East and didn't went to the ACC. You know, like that would have like that would have been right. cool, you know, to do just because, you know, you got the pits, the Yukons, going to the St. John's and the Nova. Man, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you getting it. You, man, I got to come across Villanova, though, my freshman year. We played them in the tournament. Oh, did you? So, they had, the they had yeah, uh, man. Was Scotty Reynolds. Kyle Lowry. No, 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 no. Kyle Lowry. Freshman year. You said your freshman year. Kyle Lowry. Yeah. Yeah. Alan Ray. Randy Foy. Yeah. Alan Ray. Yeah. Steve Nardi. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's four God I mean, <laughs> No doubt. They was, that was yeah, a beast to tough. deal with, yo. They was, they was tough as shit. I grew up playing against Scotty, though. You know, Scotty from Virginia. Oh, did you? Okay, now he's mm-hmm. nice. I said, damn, Scotty used to be a dude. He was his whole life. He was his whole life. life. <laughs> he, he was younger than us. He, he, he was younger than me. Yeah. He, he probably a little bit older than you, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one year younger than us. Mm-hmm. Is, is, is coaching something that you think about? You know what I'm saying? If you had an opportunity to go back to BC and get on staff, and you, is that something that an opportunity that you would jump mm-hmm. on? I would. I would consider it. I would consider it. I don't think that I would um, get right into it right now. I think it's it's still a lot of things that that I need to learn just about the uh, this generation of kids, which is why I enjoy Man. working with kids because yeah. it's very different. You know, it's very different, and I don't want to say that it's good or bad or you know whatever, but it's different. Um, mm-hmm. And how they look at the game is different. How they approach the game is different. You know, all of that stuff. Like everything is just different. Um, so. I want to continue to learn more about them as people, the young generation, like mm-hmm. what they, how they want to approach, like how they prepare when things happen and the adversity hit. Like one of my biggest challenges is how can I hold one of these kids accountable without the kid just being like, yeah. oh, no, nah, I don't want to do this no more. You know, like this is a thing. And I'm big on accountability and preparation. I'm big on you doing. And if you are doing something that, uh, if you are doing not, if you're not doing something that you said you was going to do and I hold you accountable for it, how are you going to respond? Like, mm-hmm. you know, what do you think about that? Like, are you going, are you going to actually consider what I'm saying or are you going to just do whatever you want to do? Do I have to sit right. back and accept that? Right. <laughs> or do I, you know, like it's so many yeah. questions for me. Um, but I would definitely, uh, I would definitely think about it. I would sit and really, you know, consider it. Um, being that I do have some relationships with the players there um, and mm-hmm. the coaches and things like that, obviously I'm connected to the city of Boston. My son's in Boston, so I'm up there all the time anyway. Um, so I would I would think about it. I would think about it. Yeah, I think it's just something that the kids, like you mentioned, the kids of this generation need guys from our generation to kind of help them and you know yeah. mold them a little bit better than what what's been happening you know what i'm saying because i think like you said accountability yeah. there's been a, in this generation a lot of guys don't hold them accountable because if you're nice i'm gonna let it slide or whatever the case may be uh, you know what i mean so there's just mm-hmm. certain things that i don't agree with with how these kids are being coached and, and, and taught the game mm-hmm. of basketball that we need to come back around and be with the youth and, and teach them the right way to do things, you know, with not mm-hmm. taking away what they got already. Cause you know, the kids are skilled as hell like today, Man. the skill level is Crazy. insane, but still being able to Man. put our imprint on them from, from that 
I guess we old heads now, like the old, the old, older days, you know what I'm saying? 10, 15 years ago, whatever yeah. it is, just how we came up and mixed that together and they'll be straight. But I do think it's and important they, that our generation start coaching these kids a little bit more. Hey, they skill, yeah. they skill definitely way more skill. I mean, everything I evolves, right? The game of basketball has evolved. You know what I'm saying? Just, just with everything mm -hmm. that comes with it, as far as like, you know, what, what's available to these kids. Like, you know, we ain't had trainers growing up. I ain't, motherfucker ain't had no training. We was outside hooping. And it's a give and take with that shit. Like, it's it's a lot of good and it's a, and it's a lot of bad, yep. depending on, I mean, who who's teaching you. But, but that's one thing mm -hmm. I, I think that is it, it, kind of, uh, you know, hurting the, the game is just because starting from the youth level, you putting these kids in, like, pressure situations or, or they don't even know if they fucking like the game yet. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you they, you, you doing all this like, uh, AAU at fucking four and under and, and shit like that. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so like it's too, it's too saturated because it's not about the kids for real anymore. It's about, you know, the sponsors and, and, and the shoe shit. Yeah. It's about yes, the, sir. it's about the yes, brand. Sir. So like, <laughs> if you could get like, like Reese, you know, you, we could talk about overseas in Europe, how they start them, you know, at, at, on club teams at a young age, but they teaching them the fundamentals in like the game of basketball and, and, and really how to play, you know what I'm saying? And what it takes to get there and the hard work, like uh, the, you could, the, you go on, some of these trainers going off right away and just showing them some shit like, how the fuck you teaching them shit like that? They don't even know how to shoot a left hand layup. You know what I'm saying? Or or, or, or regular yeah. right hand layup, or or the proper the proper footwork. Like that's that's half the thing, and that's why I read some the other day. The NBA gonna be over half uh, international in like in like two, three, four, oh, five years, doubt. just because they know how to play play the game, and that shit that says a lot about the youth basketball in America and, and what's being taught and, and what's really being valued. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm -hmm. what's being valued is, is, is not the correct things, man. The, these kids. And, and then mm -hmm. you, you see it in their play. You see it. In the, the, I don't know about what you know, kids but, don't know, even know what a reverse pivot is, but they, they could Euro step the hell out. You know what I mean? The, for the basics. Dog, is, the so can't, shuffle is, can't, can't, can't shuffle cup. Can't shuffle cup. Don't know. Can't it. a post pass. I <laughs> I'm seeing high school games out here, bro. I'm I'm seeing high school games out here. I'm like, dog, these motherfuckers are terrible. When I say terrible, dog, mm -hmm. like you got a motherfucker who this oh uh, he might be the best player on the team. I'm looking at him like this motherfucker can't play nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Dog. What the fuck you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like you can't even, uh, dog, and then you can't even make a re or make a uh, make a jump regular jump shot like. No, it's, it's the 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 level has gone down because of of the style of how, what they're being taught to value. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just I don't know, but I think it is important it, to be getting guys like like you know uh, us to be able to really like let these kids know, and, and not from like like yeah, they're they're skilled, but more from a mental standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like how you approach the game, like how, how you approach your, mm -hmm. your daily routine, like getting that work and how you going to take care of your body. Like, you know, those, those things that, that really matter because I, I think for mm -hmm. us, I grew up, I just love to play. Like that was, I, mm -hmm. I love to play. I feel like some of these kids are being forced because they feel like, you know, they got the skill or they talk or, or whatever it may be. That shit going to burn out, man. That shit gonna nah, burn out is. if you don't if you don't really like that game, and they don't understand what you really got. Yo, you got to do that shit every day, man. Every, every day, day. Yo, if you want to give yourself a chance, like you can't two two times a week, motherfucker. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make my seventh grade team, and that's gonna be it for you, bro. That's it. That's it, man. One of the two things, man. One, I think uh, going back to the, the culture aspect, we need more of us in those positions because we're the ones that these kids really respect when they look at yep. the game nowadays nowadays you know before you know before when we were coming up there weren't a lot of guys there weren't a lot of actual players that were coaching like that but we had people around us that we respected and we loved that understood the game and they taught mm -hmm. what they understood which was the yeah. fundamentals of the game so we learned the very very basic stuff now, as we got older, we were able to develop, you know, between crosses and all this other stuff. We were able to develop these other things because we were taught by the next level of person. But nowadays, exactly. you got kids, you got guys teaching this who don't even know what it is, but you got them trying all of these things. Like, I look at, I hate looking at trainers nowadays, make kids 
do all of this. Uh, I'm like, you got this kid doing all this stuff that, that Paul George and Kyrie and all of this. Oh, <laughs> it blows the fuck out of me, dog. Like, no, like, no lie. He like, don't even get me started, bro. Like, I, can, I can go for hours about this. Like, I, I hate it, bro. And the reason why I hate it is because, like, bro, this is a kid, bro. Like, you are messing this kid up. Like, yeah, yeah. he gonna go out here really thinking that he can just go out here and do some of these things. You're showing them all this NBA stuff, but what you're not telling them about the NBA thing is you can't touch, you can't touch motherfuckers. You can't mm-hmm. touch them. There's no, there's not real physicality when you got the ball. There's hella space on the floor. Yeah. This guy has, and uh, and then they, this guy was like this when he was 10 years old. He just had to step into it. You know, like he was a talent like this, right. and he's six nine. Yeah. <laughs> and he, like for one, you're not even thinking about how big the kid is, like the shots that he's taking. I'm like, you showing this kid all of these step back, step back jumper, this pull back, this, that, and the third. I'm like, bro, he can barely get the ball to the basket. You like, and saying? you get mad at him because he shoot the ball over the rim one time. I'm like, bro, he's ten years old. He's not gonna be able to do this every single time. He can't do it. He may make, yeah. he may make a couple. Yeah, he will. He'll make a couple, but he's not even physically strong enough to do some of these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then. Anyway, I, I don't even want to go on that because no, I can't. No, no, fat, no, like I said, real shit. Like I train like kids, I said, just like, like that you could said. Go, that could go. That could go. I train a kid. I'm like, yo, man. You got, and the social media, right? You see these kids uh-huh. see things on on the phones, and they're like, let me go in the gym and do the same thing. I'm going to gyms. I'm seeing kids shoot step backs, but they're shooting two hands. I'm like, relax. Like, what relax. Are you, doing? you know what I'm saying? What are you doing? Just you know, <laughs> four shots the baseline. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I keep saying they're skipping chapters. Kids want to start a chapter 10 of what happened in the intro. You know what I mean? So you got to really reel them in and and teach them, yo. That's the thing. Uh, These kids are being taught by the the phones and the computers and whatever else that they see. They believe mm -hmm. that this is what it is, not knowing that X player, Steph, Dane, whoever had to build up shooting form shots before they got to shooting from 40 feet or whatever the case is. Every day. You know what I'm saying? And it's every day, exactly. Every day. Watch this. Watch this, though. They don't. They don't watch the whole workout. They don't watch the actual workout, no. so they don't even see that they still shoot form shots. <laughs> still, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, still, mm-hmm. like, still. This man, had four championships, MVP, shoot the ball from half court with ease. And when you watch him start his workout, he start running the basket like this. Mm-hmm. So now you picking and choosing what you want to see. <laughs> now you picking and choosing what you want to see. But I don't blame the kids for that. I don't blame the kids for that. You know what I'm saying? Like if we had if we had the access to some of these things that they have to be able to see some of these things they they see, I would go out there and try to do the same things. I would go out there and imagine to try to do the same things. But now you need that coach, that you, that Chris Joe to come in there and be like, okay, in order to get to that, first you gotta exactly. do this. And 100%. now this is what we're gonna do. I give y'all one, one quick example. I was on the phone with a parent last night. Uh he wants me to train his son. Kid, kid is good. I already work with their team, so I know who the kid is already. Kid is good. Kid can, he, he has the, the talent, the natural talent. He's like nine or 10 years old. He's a, he's a real kid. Um, and you know, his, his dad was like, yes. And, uh, you know, I, I see him being more of a point guard, you know, this, that, and the third. And all I'm thinking for him is, is D1, like no D2, no D3, nothing, just D1. And I said, okay. I'm going to tell you like this. And this is what I tell every parent, you know, when I get ready to work with their kids. This is not going to be fun. I'm telling you right now. If you think you're going to come in here and and have fun, if you think you'll come in here and just have fun every day, it's not going to happen. We're not going to have fun every single time. Sometimes we're going to come in here and you're going to walk out of here mad as hell thinking that you didn't get something done. But... We're going to work from the very, very bottom. I don't care what this kid knows. I don't care how much yeah. he can do. I don't care how, like, what you handle. I, I don't care what you can do. It don't matter. We're going to start from here, and then we're going to start from the footwork. We're going to start from understanding the pivots. We're going to start from mm-hmm. basics, very, very basics. We're going to get to your shooting form. Like, yeah, you're doing all these moves, but you're throwing a ball up. With two hands, okay, so now nah, we, we got to get away from that. Like, yeah. we're going to start from the very, very bottom. And that's any kid. I don't care if he 10. I don't care if he 15. I don't care if he 21. No, that's a fact. This is where we're starting at. <laughs> if you can't do these things, it's not going to work for you later. So you got to understand this. So I'm like, yo, so I'm telling the dad, like, yo, you, you, 
your expectations are amazing, and and you should have expectations for your kid. But don't just go out there and think that he's just gonna automatically be able to just do whatever he wants on a basketball court. That's not how basketball is. Right? No, nah, it's not. not it's not. Is. He got to get stronger. That's funny, he got to understand the basics. Like it's all so these many things, factors like, into this about. shit. So many factors so many. Dog, that they don't that they so don't many. even a parent might not understand. Like. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, so man, it's the worst. What make me mad is the parents be yelling and screaming, and I be looking at their parents like, "This little dude better than you right now." <laughs> <laughs> like, what, like, what are you screaming at him for? But like, they don't you, have you no clue, clue, man. Parents no clue. Works, yo. No clue, man. No clue. And they and they Sometimes also I be like, they, so, so the kids say shit. It, my fault. Right, right, when, when the parents <laughs> sometimes they talk. I'm like, in the back of my head, you know, I don't want to really be disrespectful, but at the same time, I'm like, yo. I ain't been disrespectful. I'm just giving it to you straight. Exactly. <laughs> but, but you know how they take it. No, I don't. All right, motherfucker. You don't know what you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't. That's right. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. You, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you ain't got to listen. I ain't making you come here. I ain't tell you to come over here. I ain't, you know, I'm not. That, that might be 350 you know, an hour. I, I need 350 an hour. Yeah. 350 an hour. Fuck yeah. it. I, 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 I'll, I'll let you talk I your shit for a second. Arrogant. Yeah, no. I ain't trying to do that. But if you want to sit there and take me, then my man, go and do it yourself. We won't have to do this. Yeah. Uh, like, 100%. Do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't have to do this. Yeah, if you and know, that's no disrespect. If you, Nah, facts. And then they go on YouTube and and, and and type up best ways to train kids, and they don't. They, you know what I'm saying? They'll try to do it on their own, doing it all wrong. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, parachute, have them running outside, all type of shit. They'll start doing. You know what I mean? But <laughs> the levels. It's, 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 it's funny, steps, dog. It's steps. honestly it's funny. It's funny. It's like the gift and the curse of having access to everything. You know, just yeah. like it is. You know, it's a gift. It was a gift and a curse to not have access to everything. You know, like, yes. and now, you know, you're getting to see the giving the curse of having access to everything. So, you know, it is what it is. It's cool. It's, it's it's nice to navigate. It's good to, it's good to see. For me, it's good to see that the personalities and, you know, you get to see the energy of the people, the emotions. You get to see, you know, what they're like, you know, what they're really thinking. Mm-hmm. But then you also get to see how the kid responds. And that's the most important thing for me. I want to see how the kid responds when he makes a mistake. Does he look over there at his parents and shit? Like, yeah. yeah. When he does when he misses a shot, like does he just you know his head down and he walking up and down the court? Like when you mess something up, like I tell kids all the time, I'm like, yo, who you think you are on the court that you ain't gonna miss no shots? You know what I mean? Facts. Like, who you think? Who you think you are? Like I want to know who you. I want to know, but I seriously want to know what you think. I want to know what you think because now I got to give you the reality too to make sure that you understand. Like, hey, bro, mm-hmm. you seen you seen Steph Curry had like seven points the other night. Why you think that you can't go out there and not score? <laughs> like, I wonder. I really want to know what you actually think about it. So now we can figure out that middle ground. Like, okay, bro, listen, this is how it's going to go. You know, it's not always going to be amazing. It's not, you know, it is what it is. But you got to show up on a day-to-day basis, regardless of if you're going to get five or if you're going to get 35. How you approach it, it has to be the same. And then you'll start finding consistency. Once you start finding the consistency, and then when you do have a bad game within that, you know what to do. You know what to do. You know how to overcome it. You know what the mindset is. You don't get too low. You don't get too high. Uh, you, you know, you understand that there's a middle ground in this. You know, so, you know, it's important for, again, going back to having, you know, guys like us who have experience in the game, being able to go back and help them with that part. Because basketball is basketball. Like, to me, basketball is not hard. Like, in my opinion, it's not hard. But the mentality of being able to show up every single day, regardless of what was going on, that's the part that's hard. That's the part that that's challenging. Like, that's the part that can take you from uh, loving the game to not loving the game um, because you got to kind of because you got to got to go through that. So, you know, it's yeah. you know, it's much more than just it's much more than just uh, that on court aspect. Yes, a fact. Hey, bro, before uh, before we get you up out of here, um, I, I mean, we got to do it. You know, give me give me your prediction for tonight. And it's a late game, nine p.m. Like we said, it's both Ooh. teams are ten and four. Uh, it, it's in the dome, though, baby. It's in the dome. So just, I know, just give man, me your pr- nine prediction for tonight. I ain't gonna lie. That nine p.m. That nine p.m. start just did something to me. I was I was real confident. <laughs> <laughs> 7 p.m. 
you know, you know that, that's different. You know, the 9 p.m. game is different. Like, that's late. Like, yeah. all right, here we go. I got, I got D.C. I got D.C. in a, in a low-scoring affair. 72-68. Close one. We figure it out in the end. Make a couple shots in the end, and, and we go from there. And we go from there. We got to keep that PG under control, though. We got to keep this. We got to keep your yeah. PG under control. <laughs> if we don't keep him under control, it's gonna be a long night. Cause he make everybody. You know, he the engine that kind of pushes everybody else. And if he's rolling, the Q's is rolling, yeah. and you know it's gonna be a difficult night. But I'm gonna go seventy two sixty eight and a close one. BC comes out with it. Yeah, we, we those, our backcourt got to come up tonight, Joe. I mean, it, JJ got to be more aggressive. It, Judah got to yeah. do what he does, and then we got to get. We've been talking about that wing. That three, we got to get production from that wing, man. And then you know we yeah. got to lock in uh, defensively and, and be able to rebound the basketball. But I, I know you buy seventy, seventy two, sixty eight. I get, I, I, I get that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, no, we'll take it. We'll take it. Right, man. Being in that dome, that dome, tough, man. I never played yeah, in the Jesus. dome, but just when I walked in there, I knew it was tough. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah Judah got go crazy. I, I, like, um, we, when we played the last game, Duke lost by 20. Got to come back home, get a chance that. to protect home court. You know what I'm saying? So I think now these guys are coming in fired up. Had a week to really think about things, watch film, get better. Um, I think Judah probably comes in, shoots about 10 to 12 free throws, finishes the game with 25 plus points. I mean, that's what I, I predict. Um, and obviously, you know, mm. obviously I got Q winning mm. probably by like seven, seven to ten. Oh, I got Q winning by like okay. seven. seven to that's 10 a comfortable points. joint. Comfortable yeah. joint. Yeah. Okay. Shot selection gonna be big. I can tell you that. Shot selection gonna be very, big very time. big in this game. I think that's where I think that's where it went wrong for y'all in that Duke game. But also, I think that's where it goes wrong for us in, in games as well. That shot mm-hmm. selection is. I don't think it's it existing in these young dudes now, but that's a whole other thing. Turn the ball over. We had 17 <laughs> turnovers too, man. You got to be able to take care of the ball so we can make the most of our so possessions. You get shots. But, uh, you get exactly. Shots. Exactly. So, no. hey, Reese, man, I appreciate you coming on, dog, for real. Just kind of chopping it up with us at Bayheim's Army. Yes, sir. And, you know, your Big Boston time. College days and in your prediction, man. So, hopefully, we have you uh, on again down the road, but you know, it's all love always. Yeah, and I appreciate you, my guy. Shout anytime, man. Anytime. <laughs> anytime, man. Anytime. Appreciate y'all guys. Yes, man. sir. Appreciate you. You already know, bro. Love. Hey, Joe, man. Shit, that was that. That that's a wrap, man. Shit, one hour. That's a wrap. Hey, before before we get off, man. That we uh, we didn't shout them out. We want to shout out our sponsor, Flintstone. Again, I don't know if it's a dreary day or something like that. How you feeling? Get your pre roll. Get your edible. I, Whatever, whatever you into, you man, do what you, you got to do. Whatever you into, go ahead and do it. Guess what? I'm going to be in Q's at some point, and guess where I'm going to be going? What you say? Take 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 a right down what street? You know what I'm oh, saying? Walk down right what down street? Walk. Make a right. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. I'm going to finish shout it right out. there. Yeah, shout out Flintstone. Appreciate you sponsor us. And you know we appreciate everybody always tuning in with us, all the viewers showing us love. We'll be back here next Wednesday, 10 we to 11 a.m. Until then, we yeah!